Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be fixing the best bleed and strength build by Ashen One. Now he has many builds that are called the best bleed and strength builds. However, they're all in the same patch. So they can't all be the best, right? So our weapon of choice is the Iron Greatsword plus 25 with the Blood Affinity and the Ash of War Seppuku. And in our offhand we have a Dragon Communion Seal plus 10. We found in testing that the Iron Greatsword was giving us the highest AR for our stat spread, which we will look at in a moment. I don't know what testing they did. I doubt it's actually correct, but even so, having the highest AR means little because AR is not damage and it's not DPS. So, for example, with our stats, the Gargoyle's Blood Twin Blade has the highest DPS. The Blood Iron Greatsword isn't even in the top 10 for DPS. AR is not that important. Damage and DPS are the most important things. To really get our boosts going, we have the White Mask boosting attack when bleed is in effect. This is our optimum headpiece. We're wearing the Hoslo's armor set for our fashion souls. Again, you can optimize with more utility pieces if you want. We have some variation depending on the situation, but we start with Lord of Blood's Exaltation working with the White Mask to increase our attack power when bleed kicks in. The Dagger Talisman boosting our critical damage. Then we have two utilities for now, Urtree's Favor plus two boosting our health, stamina, and equip load, and the Green Turtle Talisman boosting stamina recovery speed. I know what you're thinking, what about enemies that are immune to bleed? Well, simply try variation 2. Change your blood affinity to heavy and put the Lion's Claw Ash of War on the Iron Greatsword. Put in the Shard of Alexander to boost Lion's Claw, then put in the Carrion Filigree Crest to lower skills FP cost, and you can keep the Dagger Talisman in to boost critical attacks. Okay, so first off, the setup's not good. If you're going to use an Ash of War for poise breaking and for damage on a weapon that is capable of thrusting, do not use Lion's Claw. You should use Giant Hunt, because that is going to net you more damage on counter hits, as well as having the same poise damage as Lion's Claw. And the Talisman setup, don't use Carrion Trilogy Crest. It sucks. The Iron Greatsword, with the Blood Affinity, has more damage than the Heavy Greatsword, with his stat spread. So for him to recommend the Heavy Greatsword over the Blood Greatsword is insane. Of course, you should just use a cult, as you can see, but recommending an affinity that has lower damage because the enemy is immune to bleed is absurd. I have no idea why he thought this was a good idea, it's not. It's just not. In the Flask of Wondrous Physic, we have the Faith Knot tier, boosting our faith by 10. More on this when we look at our stats. And we have the Stone Barb Crack tier, boosting our chance to break enemies for critical hits. But let's have a look at the stats next. I started with the Hero class, and we have aimed to min-max strength and arcane with this build. We have Vigor at 57. Mind at 11, this gives us enough base FP to buff with Golden Vow, Seppuku and Flame Grant Me Strength with one FP bar. Endurance is at 15, Strength at 54, because we will be two-handing the Iron Greatsword we get 50% bonus to Strength, which makes our total Strength whilst two-handing 81, not 54. Nice. Dexterity at 10 so we can wield the Iron Greatsword, Intelligence we don't touch, Faith is at 15, we use the Faith Knot tier to boost our Faith to 25 so we can buff with Golden Vow. And finally we have Arcane at 60 for our Bleed buildup. Our Dragon Communion Seal is scaling with Arcane, and this is increasing the Bleed buildup from Swarm of Flies. This full build isn't bad as far as stats go. You should have 60 bigger at 150 though. 11 Mind is not needed. The Faith isn't needed because there's better buffs that don't require Faith. There's nothing horribly wrong as far as the points to Strength or Arcane, which is the main focus of this build, but it would be nice to see that 60 Vigor. For my improved build, we're going to have 60 Vigor because that's the Vigor soft cap. We're going to have 14 Endurance because that's what we need to not fat roll. We're going to have 61 Strength. It's past the 60 Strength soft cap. However, we have no other points that would be beneficial to invest into. 
So we're going to invest into it a little bit more. We're going to have 15 dexterity to meet the requirements to wield the Gargoyle's Twin Blade. And then we're going to have 60 arcane. That is the final auxiliary soft cap, as well as the arcane damage soft cap. For weapons, we're going to be using the Gargoyle's Twin Blade as that has the highest DPS. For the armor, we have the White Mask, Fingerprint Armor Altered, Battle Mage Gauntlets, and Crucible Greaves. For the Talismans, we have Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Millicent's Prosthesis, Lord of Blugs Deslocation, and Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. Rotten Wing Sword Insignia and Millicent's Prosthesis, as always, are going to have the stacking damage buffs. The Lord of the Blood's Exaltation and the White Mask will boost our damage when bleed is procced nearby. And the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman is going to increase our damage negation. For the Great Rune, we have Verdon's Great Rune because that is the best Great Rune for PvE. And for the Crystal Tier, we have Opline Hard Tier and Thorny Crack Tier. Opline Hard Tier is going to provide us more damage negation. And the Thorny Crack Tier is going to provide stacking damage buffs.